Chow Down Chow or Random Gaming, depending on what All you're right. watching. So, um, those are probably the fights that I want to talk about on the card that is being worked on and the fights that I don't want to give predictions for. But there is um, some news flashes that I want to talk about, and I, I sort of want to make this the tradition of every show is to go through some of the top headlines of the week. And just sort of give you my quick takes on what I think about these headlines, what I think about the issues at on hand, um, and uh, so I'm just gonna browse some websites, read some headlines, give you some um, some quick reactions to them. Um, and the first thing that I want to talk about is um, this just came in this morning that um, Lyman Good. The UFC fighter Lyman Good got diagnosed with uh, the coronavirus. And um, he was scheduled to face Bilal Muhammad at UFC 249 until he decided to pull out. Um, at that time, due to un undisclosed injuries. But now we have learned it was because uh, he was dealing with uh, the corona, as I call it. Um, I think this again proves my point that... Um, Going ahead with events at these times, if they were to have the UFC 249 Itachi Palace was such a reckless decision because you never know who could have the virus. They could be asymptomatic no matter how many guardrails you put in place. It's really hard to avoid something like this blowing off in your face. Um, I think Dana White knows that and I think it's a risk that he has thought of. I think it's incredibly reckless. And it's it does not do, it does not do the EFC any favors um, in terms of projecting it as a, a legitimate sport in the eyes of the public. But like I said, I'm a MMA fan, so fuck them. I want to see my fights. I want to see Ferguson Gaethje, and Lemon Good seems okay. So you know, I mean, you gotta take risks to make the big bucks. Uh, as Dana would say, I didn't make it 25 years by not taking risks. So, good shit, Dana. Keep doing you. Make 249 happen. All right. I was in the army. I was. I was. Um, yeah, I used to serve in the army during the week uh, when the news came out that UFC 249 was canceled. I was sitting there using my phone. And the last I heard, it was still going on. I was getting ready. I was planning watch-alongs and shit. And suddenly, it was canceled. And I was so bummed. I was so fucking bummed. Ruined my week. Not gonna... I'm not gonna lie to you. You don't have a lot of good news when you're in the army. UFC 249 was one of them. But now it's happening again. And now I uh, finally got discharged of my mandatory service. Um... I can't wait for it to fucking happen. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Um, okay, so besides that, what other news do we have? I, I think Dominic Reyes and uh, John Jones has been making a lot of news headlines lately with John Jones saying he might fly uh, Polish power, Jan Blachowicz, ahead of uh, Dominic Reyes. Um, I saw the Dominic Reyes-John Jones fight. It was a good fight. I would love to see that again. But in my humble opinion, if you or I or John Jones, why would we want to fight Dominic Reyes again? It has proven that he has what it takes to to just end our title reign. I would rather fight someone new, add another name to my resume. So yeah, Dominic Reyes talking about how John Jones is uh, ducking him. Damn right he's ducking you. You would do the same thing and you, if you were in his position. Maybe you wouldn't, you know, drive off in fucking New Mexico shooting guns, talking to hobos. But you would damn sure not take a fight again against a young, hungry lion who has proven that he has what it takes. Uh, he has what it takes to be. I think that is um, very apparent. And to be honest... With the, the recent impressive streak that Jan Blachowicz is on, I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. I watch it either way. 
A lot of people's opinions are that Dominic Reyes poses the much bigger threat and the much bigger draw for audiences. I don't know if that's true. Put the fight in Europe. Put Jan Brachowicz at the top of the bill. I think it's going to draw crowds. I think it's going to draw a huge crowd. Put it in Poland. I think it's going to be fucking insane. And I love that fight too. I love Polish power. So, either way, works for me. Um, I would actually more like to see Jan Blachowicz versus John Jones. I want to see John Jones keep cycling through opponents until someone finally dethrones him in the 205 decision and go on, um, go on living with these young hungry lions challenging each other after John Jones has been dethroned. Before that, keep throwing that at John Jones. Keep throwing them. He'll be he'll he'll keep being the shit out of every single one of you doing coke, driving off, talking to hobos. He'll keep doing all of that. It's the mystery and the magic of John Jones. He'll keep doing all that, and he's still the fucking greatest of all time. Um, another piece of news about John Jones is this whole business with Israel Adesanya. I think Israel Adesanya is way bigger than people think. I think he can actually bulk up and would pose a threat to John Jones. But then again, John Jones took DC down. All right. Calvin Gastelum took Israel Adesanya down. I think John Jones is going to take Israel Adesanya to the ground, slice him up, dice him up with fucking elbows, and his night is going to be over. I don't think he has what it takes to beat him yet. Um, he's a great fighter, no doubt. I think he has the size and the attributes and the fucking heart and the skills on the feet to beat him. I think all he has to do is strengthen his skills on the ground. I don't think he's there yet. I just don't think he's there yet. I really don't think he's there yet. I mean... If you look at his fight against Whitaker, look at his fight against um, uh, Anderson Silva and Gastelum, they're all primarily standing, even versus Yoel Romero. Yoel doesn't really use his wrestling. He has never faced an opponent, a high-level grappler, that's going to know how to take you down and ground and pound you and control you on the ground. He's just never faced that type of opposition before, and I think... His fight against John Jones is going to be a tough night for him. All right, next up, um, the PFL is rescheduled for next year, canceling their regular season, their playoffs next year. PFL is a hidden gem. For all you UFC fans that doesn't really watch any other promotions, if you had to watch one, I'd say it's the PFL. The format's really interesting. There is some really good fighters that are in PFL. Um, Kale Harrison, I believe, is in PFL. Justin Gaethje came out of World Series of Fighting, which is the predecessor of PFL. You know, it's there's a lot of good talent coming out, and if you just get bored one Friday night or whatever, and um, you there's no UFC to watch, one of those fucking gap weeks, turn on PFL. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, about the quality of the matches. And now, I guess the last piece of news is about the former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley. Um, he just came out and said he wanted a bout on May 9th. He was originally scheduled to fight Leon Edwards in London. That, fa- uh, that fell through, and now Woodley... Being typical, Tyron Woodley turned around and said he never wanted to fight Leon Edwards in the first place. He wants Colby Covington. He wants Colby Covington. Everyone wants fucking Colby Covington. Fucking nerds. That's why he's the best. Because he draws people to watch him. He's actually my favorite fighter. I think Colby Covington is in that realm. Is in that realm of... um. Of the Rock or Chris Jericho, the the um, the uh, if you watch 
professional wrestling, you would know. He's sort of the heel that is slowly getting over. If a heel gets hated long enough and hard enough, there comes a point where he becomes the anti-hero. That is sort of goes up, his popularity goes up, and I think Kobe Covington is right on that infraction point. Give him the fight against Tyrone Woodley. If he wins, he's going to right away call for another title shot, and I think the crowd is going to love him this time. I really think he's at that point where people are starting to like him. I used to hate him, but now I like him, because I think he came out and said it's all a gimmick. It's funny. It is funny. It's entertaining, and he adds another layer to the fight, and he's a great fucking fighter. All right. If I'm Tyrone Woodley, Leon Edwards and Colby Covington, I think, post about the same level of threat. And Leon Edwards, for some reason, just couldn't get over. For the, for the life of him, just couldn't get over. So don't take that fight. Take the fight against Colby Covington. Or ask for the fight against Colby Covington. That might be your fastest way to a title shot. But in my opinion, I think Tyrone Woodley's doing all this Hollywood shit. I think his time is over. I don't think... He'll ever fight for a championship again. And I I mainly is going to tune in because I want to see what Colby Covington does to him. And what Colby Covington is going to say in the weeks leading up to and after the fight. So, I wouldn't mind that. You add Covington Woodley to the May 9th UFC 249 card. I will give you all my money, Dana. I will give you all of it. I will give you all of it, Dana. Please, make it happen. Make it the most stacked card that anyone has ever seen. All right, Dana? Um, yeah, so that about ends it with the news update segment. Like I said.